welcome back. Last time you saw me, I was working on the V4, so that's still happening. I've got the pattern um, all drawn up on the computer and programmed, ready to be cut out of foam. But if we rewind a little bit, you'll remember me saying um, I had a friend's router I was going to fix up to cut the patterns on. So, yep, the router's all fixed up. I had to fold up a box, put the electronics in there, wire everything up, and then test it. So. I got sidetracked uh, way back in May, and I thought of another engine to do. Way simpler, no gearbox, uh, V-twin, you know, very simple. So between then and now, I fixed the router, designed the engine, and cut out the foam patterns. So you can see some of that here. Now, these patterns, they only take about 45 minutes to cut out on the CNC router, way faster than using my CNC mill. So in the future, I will be getting myself a CNC router um, or probably making one. So if that's something you wanna see, let me know. I'm pretty average at videoing things at times um, because sometimes I just get, get the ball rolling and videos slow down the progress. But I like sharing things. Here's the part. So this is a, what's this? seven eighths or about 22 odd millimeter sprue and these are I think 16 millimeter um, so they're all you know constant um, surface area into these little feeders um, so yeah here's the pattern all machined out of two pieces of extruded polystyrene glued together so this is a whole different engine to the v4 the reason i made this was to test out the router before um, using a whole sheet of foam, finding the perfect recipe for speeds and feeds. Um, yep, so I did learn the router would lose steps if I went over 2.7 meters a minute, and that's due to running on a 24 volt power supply. So that can be up to 42 volts in the future, although the owner of the machine, they're not really that fussed about the slow rapids. So. But anyways, yeah, if you want to know more about this V-Twin engine, I can do a whole nother video. Just make sure you like this video. Um, really helps out and then lets me know that you guys enjoy the content. So yeah, if this video gets, I don't know, a thousand likes, I'll do a full build breakdown um, on the parts I used, why I built this and what it is. So you'll see it, but I'll give you the reason why and what it's for. Um, yeah, other than that, let's get into it. How'd it go, Connor? Um, it's pretty good. I heard Johnny say a swear word in there. He said, oh, but nah. it looks like the pause come out pretty good. Well, we'll see. Uh, hopefully in about, I don't know, 30 minutes, we'll tip it out and see what happens. Jeez, it's a big chunk of aluminum at the top. I wonder if any actually went into the part. No. Yes? Yeah. Oh, God. It's got me worried that it didn't even form. Just pull it backwards. Yeah, bro, it's fing heavy, man. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Look at it. It stinks, eh? I'll grab it with some. Um... Oh. oh, no! Did it break off? The parts, the thing's still in there, the pattern, undamaged. Oh, what the f? How did that happen? So, 
what happened here is a little bit obvious. Uh, during the pour, I noticed I had a whole heap of aluminium left over, and it stopped taking material pretty early on. I thought the material may have been a little bit cold before the pour, seeing as the crucible wasn't glowing orange. Being too eager and getting this sort of done without waiting too long, I poured anyway, which was a bit foolish. So in a perfect world, or in the future, I'm going to get myself a pyrometer so I can actually measure the temperature of the aluminium, which I want to be pouring between, well, over 720 degrees, but not too much over to avoid that hydrogen, um, you know, gas being dissolved in the material. So the only way I can tell the temperature at the moment is by checking the color of the crucible. Now, I need that dull orange glow, which tells me the material is between seven and 800 degrees. So we're gonna have another crack at this, but long story short, the aluminium made its way down the sprue into the gating and it froze. It just did not have enough energy to keep melting the polystyrene and punch through. Once it froze in the gate, it just backed all the way up, filled up the pouring basin, and then I had a whole bunch left over. Luckily for you guys, we can fast forward 24 hours and you can have a look at take two. And this time I even managed to capture the pour in all of its glory. Enjoy. So after all that, uh, two attempts, well, it's actually the other half, but yeah, after all that, here it is. So it actually came out pretty good. Now there are a couple of minor defects. So here it is up nice and close. First thing I can tell you, my casting is getting better and better every time I do it. Um, as I learn to control the process, and this time I did notice I was far less excited or nervous when pouring. And I guess that just comes with the exposure. The more you do it, the better you get and the less worried you are. And then obviously the calmer you are when you do something, uh, the better the results. You're going to focus more on the job at hand. So what I can tell you about the casting, there's a few minor defects, uh, little BBs. I don't know what causes them, I think it's just maybe bubbles in the refractory. Um, there's this leaker, I um, tried getting it off with a chisel but it wouldn't quite come off so I have to take that off with a die grinder. 
we've got the uh, remains of the uh, high surface area contact to the gate or the feed system so that just needs to be ground off um, all of these raised portions to be fair I am going to machine just kiss the surface to make them a nice bright finish um, on the side we've got the um, cam chain tensioner hole and you can see above it we've got some more little little BBs of aluminium some below and another one of these leakers I smacked most of it off with the chisel but that's about as good as I could get it you can also see the seam the whole way around I might polish this out with a die grinder before um, sandblasting so this is just wire brushed to get half of the carbon off to make it look nice for this video but otherwise the top side this is the side that had no as it was poured in this orientation um, yeah bugger all in the way of defects it would have had a nice tight layer of sand up against it um, and it came out quite good so all of these little lines um, they are caused by the end mill doing its parallel toolpath stepping over one millimeter every time um, easy thing about that it's really easy to program it does take a little while but you get a nice radius on everything and that is what we're going for we want a nice radius to make a strong part but otherwise really happy you know as I said these get better and better every time um, so you can see inside there nice little radiuses everywhere um, also I was quite amazed with how well this cast for having such a thin section here it's about three and a half millimeters it was meant to be four but yeah there's just some funnies with the router it's all that fine tuning so all in all really happy um, look forward to me casting this part it probably I won't do an in-depth video like this one I can just do it with or without music um, you know let me know in the comments if you enjoy music on the videos or you'd rather not but yeah when I cast this one it'll just be pretty much raw footage and then we'll get them together and then I'll have a crack at heat treating them to T5 um, I don't know how well the alloy will respond I mean I don't know what um, all car alloy wheels are cast from but if it responds to T5 hardening bloody good